I think there's an awful lot of spin. I, I, I spent quite a lot of time over the last few weeks trying to get my head around the legalities of not just the fiscal compact, but all the precursors to it. We have this so-called six pack that was signed in December. We have the Stability and Growth Pact, we have Maastricht. There's a huge volume of agreements and treaties, and the fiscal compact has to be seen within uh, the context, context of all of them. Um, unfortunately, there's a huge amount of spin going on. We hear, you know, vote yes for jobs. I mean, this, this treaty is not going to create jobs. It may destroy less jobs than a no vote, but it's not going to create jobs. Um, it's not going to create stability. Um, Arguably, the, the argument that people like Seamus Coffey and Carl Whelan and Colin McCarthy are giving, which I would agree with, is the long-term implications of meeting these fiscal rules for Europe will actually increase instability in Europe. Uh, in the short term, it might cause less instability again than a no vote. Um, so there's an awful lot of spin going around. The conclusion I reached was also a reluctant, a very reluctant yes vote. Um, the so-called blackmail clause stipulates that if we don't ratify the fiscal compact, we don't get access to the ESM funding. And what this vote, what this referendum comes down to for me is the following. In 2014, we run out of IMF money. And in 2014, we are going to need to borrow eight and a half billion euros above the deficit reductions we've already, we already have to make but in, order, in order to run the country. But, now, but, but, but we, we, we're, continue, we're funded till the end of 2014, aren't we? No, uh, end of no. 2013. End of 2013. All right, OK, go on. So in 2014, uh, we run out of borrow, borrowed cash, and we've got to come up with 8.5 billion. And what this comes down to, for me, is the following. If we vote yes, we get access to the 8.5 billion through the ESM. There are conditions attached to that money because we've signed yes to a fiscal compact that has uh, poor economic rules attached to it. However, those conditions don't begin to hurt us until about 2018, 2019. If we vote no to the fiscal compact, we may be able to borrow the money from the IMF or from somebody else. If we can borrow it from them... Or from the, the institution we've already borrowed money from, the, e, e, the European... The First EFSF. Yes. I don't think so, though, because that, what that stipulates is it's not going to lend any, any new money from, the, from uh, mid next year. So we may be able to borrow the 8.5 billion from the IMF or from somebody else, from America in bilateral loans, whatever. We may be able to do it. But if we do it, that will also come with a bunch of bad stipulations. We will essentially be back in an IMF program and a bunch of foreign economists will micromanage our country and start doing things like saying, you know what you should spend a billion euros on? You should spend a billion euros on water meters. Stupid stuff. If we vote no and the IMF or somebody else says, actually, we're not giving you the money or we're not going to give you all of the money, which they may do, um, we would have to make up to an eight and a half billion euro correction in 2014. That's on top of the 1.5 billion euro correction we're making anyway as part of the program. That would be really, really bad news. So wh what I reluctantly concluded, because, because this is diplomacy at gunpoint, I don't like it, we are being blackmailed, but, okay. but if we don't, if we vote yes, it buys us time. We get the 8.5 okay. billion and we have until 2018, 2019 to try and renegotiate um, the worst parts of the treaty.